pretty interesting at that point of the track. Yep, Alex Montana, one of the new drivers this weekend, making their debut for the Trulli team. Uh, Tony Liuzzi racing over in uh, Japan or in Asia as Nelson Piquet gets strapped in. So, anorak fact here, you can okay. see that Piquet's got a clear visor on. He's been running this sort of very cool-looking gold reflective visor all weekend, and he's done that. I wonder if he's struggling to actually see under the trees with the, with the lower light under the trees and the slightly overcast conditions today. He also looks like he's got half a Brazilian flag and half a Jamaican flag on the top of his helmet. Uh, yeah, it could that, be. From that little shot, but uh, if, we, if we get another view at it, we'll, we'll have a look. But anyway... There are more interesting things, probably, than, than, than <laughs> helmet designs. Actually, there's not many more interesting no. things than helmet designs. Love them. Exactly. Here's Boemi and Prost in the two Edams cars leading the, leading the field through, as we see PK heading out there, but missed about a lap of, uh, of running. Very bumpy, the circuit. You can see them uh, bouncing up and down, and when, especially when they're in the full 200. Again, that's an interesting line from Nico Prost, staying much more to the left as he comes into turn two, but we go on board with Boemi then, up to the first chicane at four and five. Yeah, there's a few chicanes here, he comes through four and five, the bollards have gone now, so they're just straight lining it. Turn five, six and seven there, flat out through that chicane. Breaking, coming up to turn eight in a minute here, there's a really load of camber on the road, that you see him go through eight now, and comes through this left kink, there's a big old bump in the road here, you might hear it go airborne in just a second. There you go, just a little bit there. Coming up to another chicane, nine and ten, a little bit tighter than the ones we've seen so far. This is where the passing is going to happen today. You're going to have to set them up through turn eight, the 9 10 area we've just seen, as they come up to 11 and 12. Pretty long straight here through as they come up to 11. The, the, the track sort of turns away from you there, making it difficult to see the actual apex point of 11 12. And you see through 13 now, this long, long left hand corner, blind the whole way through, causes problems in qualifying there. And we saw some great passes there yesterday from John Eric Vernon to turn 14. And then through this bus stop chicane, get a good exit there on the power very, very early. And down to the last corner, turn 17. This, the finish line is right after this corner, so you can really, in a qualifying situation, dive for that, that finish line. And the uh, the start of your lap and end of your lap look very, very different going through that corner. So it's 1 minute 28.617 for Sebastian Buemi. In uh, the 150 kilowatt mode, you're looking for sort of low 27s. And uh, then in the full power mode, you're looking at 1 minute 23s. As you see uh, Degrassi coming through, Duran coming through, Fabio Lima coming through. Let's have a little look back now at uh, Loic Duval. Front right lockup coming down towards Prince Albert, the left hander. Got it stopped in time though. But, he uh, did, he carried some good speed through there too. The, the brakes in these cars are really challenging. That's what uh, talking to Rob Arnott just before he came in here and says Simona de Silvestro, that's the thing she's having to get used to is the braking more than anything. That uh, was exactly the conversation I had with Simona. Where, and when I've driven the car as well, you, you brake a certain amount and it feels not bad. You brake a little bit harder and they grab very badly. The, 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 uh, there's no blanking. Carbon brakes as these cars run are all about temperature control and you can't control the temperature. So Sam Bird has just gone quickest to 127.7 and Alex Fontana has gone straight on down at uh, the left hander at turn three. He's waving to the marshals to say, or is he saying, or is he waving to the following drivers? Let's see what happened to him. Disappears out of shot there. And it uh, didn't look like he'd locked up, but just went in too deep. Yeah, just as you disappear out underneath that camera, there's a big drop off on the track and uh, it's not going to help matters when you're already you're on the edge of the braking and you, and you do that there. But uh, yellow flags away now. Yep, Fontana's got going again. And meanwhile, we've got some drivers out there doing full 200 kilowatt laps. We just had it up on the graphics a moment ago. Degrassi's one of them, and he's done a 24.026. Uh, Bruno Senna was out there as well on full power, and he now goes second quickest, a one minute 26.1, which is 2.1 seconds slower, but he might have uh, encountered the yellow flag zone. I hope so, because he's not going to be happy with that otherwise. <laughs> There's Stefan Sarazan, 24.5, within half, uh, half a second there of Degrassi. Yep, so uh, Degrassi, the quickest man out there so far. But we got into the 23s uh, in the first free practice session with uh, Loic Duval. So far, we haven't seen Daniel at Oliver Turvey. Those are the only two we haven't seen out. jean eric Verne has now emerged. He was not feeling well overnight, so had a bit of a rest and, uh, and, and has come in now ready to to take on free practice too. Yeah, a bit of dehydration or something going on there, they were saying with Jean Eric, so he did not not, uh, not feeling terribly well. He wanted to focus more on free practice two qualifying in the race. 
and uh, rather than compromise by, by heading out there this morning. But he's really limited his practice now. He's, instead of having the 45 minute FP1, he's only got the, uh, the half hour and FP2. Great shot here because you can actually see in certain lights PK's eyes and where he's focusing and looking. You'll see the bumps here of this challenging Battersea Park track to one of the chicanes there. Fantastic shot this now into the next almost flatter. Oh, oh that's no. Karun Chanduk. Left front's off missing or bent anyway. Yeah, so Chanduk's had a bit of a trouble there coming down into the uh, right hander. He was on a 200 lap at the time, so he's been marks. pushing hard. He's locked the fronts and he's, he's oh, gone into the wall. the wall. Yeah, yeah not ideal by any stretch. So Chanduk climbs out of his car. And uh, I think that's down at it looks uh, like nine, nine and ten. ten yeah. yeah, the difficult season for the Mahindra guys continues. Yep. So Chanduk out of this uh, session. Well, certainly in that car, if he can get back to the pits and get in the second one in time, he may well be able to continue. Still haven't seen Oliver Turvey out there. He's the only man that hasn't been out onto the track yet. The uh, Englishman who did such a good job yesterday. On board with Lucas de Grassi. Third in the championship now, 13 points back, but he's going to be going out in qualifying group four. So he's uh, he's the man with the sort of advantage. Is this another 200 kilowatt yes, lap? Yes, it, it is. Yeah, it sounds like it. But he's got a yellow flag zone coming up oh. just around this uh, left-hander. Oh, and Simone de Silvestro. Simone de Silvestro is in trouble there. And it uh, looks like the left rear has gone. And Lucas de Grasse is going to come up and catch her and Karun oh, Chandler. No. And that's going to totally wreck his 200 lap. Yeah, that was not ideal, was it? Wrong place. But Simone has got to get the car back to the pits. You know, yeah. That's, yeah, right. Left rear suspension. Was that caused by hitting the curbs too hard or something? I saw them. I was in the Andretti garage having a look about earlier, and I saw them looking at the back of the car and describing some of the problems. And apparently, the, the, the Simone's crash earlier was caused by uh, she damaged the suspension in okay. an, uh, earlier in the lap and that caused her to go off I see just where Lucas has gone through there in the turn 14-15 uh, area and this is interesting because we had a whole race yesterday we, well we had a whole day yesterday where suspension problems were caused by turn one and now that that's been kind of sorted we had a whole race without any suspension failures then all of a sudden we've had what two now today yeah, what you'll probably find is, is as people get more comfortable with the track, they get more aggressive with the setups and they're trying different things and get more aggressive with the curbs. And you're putting and we've lost the bollards, I guess. You've lost the bollards. You put a lot more stress through the, the, the suspension of the car and, and, and that's the result. This is Loic Duval coming into uh, Turn 1. Daniel Apt is on a full 200 lap at the moment. Uh, Duval is just cruising around at the moment. Is he doing, you know, he's on a 150 lap actually. So he comes down two and a half seconds down in the first sector, so not pushing particularly hard. Degrassi's still the quickest man out there. Daniel Apt, as I say, on a, on a full power lap. Still got the yellow flag out at turn nine, where they haven't got rid of Karun Chanduk's car yet. There's Jay Penske, the, the boss of the Dragon Racing team. That's his man, Duval. Uh, comes down towards turns eight and nine. Here's Daniel Apt then. This is really going to compromise everybody's session. This yellow flag for Karun Chandok is still out there in the turn 9 10 area. And uh, the guys cannot go through there at full racing speed while that yellow flag is out. So uh, everybody's laps are, are compromised right now. And although the car is well down the, uh, the escape road. Yeah, this is uh, Daniel Lapp then. Yano Trulli's on a full power lap too. Simone de Silvestro returns to the pit lane for Andretti. So Daniel Lapp got a yellow flag <laughs> and traffic there. Yeah. And. Uh, as Jano truly he was up behind. And Ap decides to back off just to give himself some space out there on the circuit. So you can see the standings there on the left. And it's the top three that have used their full 200 kilowatts, or at least have got a lap out of their full 200 kilowatts. We also had wave yellows at turn three there. So I don't know if someone's gone off at turn three as well, because we had wave yellow flags on the run down towards Prince Albert. So uh, keep an eye out for that one too. Such a short session when you do get the yellow flag has now gone in at turn nine because that, when, when you do get those yellow flags, it really limits your ability to do anything. Oh, and it? it was Yano Trulli. So Yano Trulli went straight on at turn three, uh, reversed up and is back on his way. But yeah, it, uh, yeah, especially in such a short session, if you've only got one chance to do your full power qualifying sim. That's it. It's all about timing, isn't it? And, it's, and luck in some cases because there's nothing you can do. You don't know that uh, what the, what's going to happen out there. Now Senna is on a full 200 lap. 
for the second time is Sam Bird. No, Sam Bird isn't, so we might see Senna catching Sam Bird. Through flashes Bruno Senna. Bird now with the Union flag and blazoned on the... Oh, he hasn't really hooked that one up, Senna. No, missed the entry, crossed the, the, <laughs> crossed the crown in the road, and you saw the big moment of oversteer next. It looks spectacular to us, but not particularly uh, quick, quick through here, yeah. Trying to break for eight now. So it's all action. Bruno's got a good technique there, gets the car turned in very, very well. So first sector for Bruno Senna, 22.8, uh, so about half a second down on, on the quickest time we've seen in sector one. Now he batters the kerb coming through uh, uh, the second chicane. Into the lake chicanes now. And he's 1.1 seconds down on Lucas de Grassi after the middle sector. And he's got Sam Bird up in front of him. Little front left lock up from Senna into the oh. wall. Yeah, that was going wrong on entry, and he just didn't manage to... Uh, he's still keeping the foot in, though, isn't yeah, he? exactly. It doesn't look like it's damaged the car too much. We'll soon find out when he turns right. <laughs> <laughs> no. We've seen this time and time again with these Formula E cars. They're, they're built of quite st stout material because we've seen them, people hit the wall in qualifying and uh, or practice qualifying, as we see here, and just keep going and end up with a half-decent lap. Senna so across the line, 3.3 seconds down, so... Well, I think the wall guys are going to have a think I probably bent a little bit the rear suspension, it's quite squared up. Touch the wall. Yeah. That's driver talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's 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 when you tell them, hoping that it wasn't on the screens at the time. <laughs> but unfortunately, the, the team are going to spot that. Yeah, they might. Yeah, Yarno truly was on a full power lap there too. Here he comes then. So it all went wrong here. Lock up. Then really took those curbs. Bang. Front Andrea. He got. And there's Karun. He's back in the pits already, uh, getting ready to head out in his second car. Stefan Sarazan's just. I uh, know oh he's still there in second place. My apologies. Daniel Apt is on a full power lap at the moment. And he's done personal bets in sectors one and two, so we might have Daniel Apt jumping up a little bit more. Sam Bird's the quickest, really, I would say, for the guys right now that haven't uh, done yeah. a full uh, 200 kilowatt qualifying time. He did it in uh, the first session this morning. Now, Jean Eric Verne out on circuit. Man who finished third yesterday. Daniel Apt goes third quickest, meanwhile. But Verne not feeling well overnight. And. Uh, now he's back out onto the circuit. He's crawling around at the moment, is uh, jean eric Verne. He's ninth quickest at the moment. You can see not putting any power through the car at the moment, just cruising along. The worst, perhaps, and probably just because you haven't had as many opportunities to go through it as the others. Probably telling him he's losing time at turn one or something mm. there. Yeah, that would, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, so we'll see if Verne backs off and then goes for it on this next lap, maybe even turn it up to 200. Hopefully. Uh, car change here. Oh no, he's coming, coming in the pits. In. Yeah, not a, not a pace car change, we'll just do it at your leisure. Remember to go into uh, P1 when you get out there. Long drive down there yeah. at 50, like 50 kilometers an hour. Yeah. Now, Stefan Sarazan's on another full power lap in the Venturi car. So he's looking to close in the gap to Lucas de Grassi at the top. Here he comes. Uh, that's Salvador Duran, and then second in the queue. Oh, well, Duran goes through turn oh. one, pushing wide, it hard. Way through one there from, Sa from Duran. But uh, he's not going to be very quick in this first sector. We'll keep an eye out on Stefan Sarazan's first sector time. He's under braking for turn three now. And then back on the power. Duran 1.2 seconds down in sector one. And Saradan does the fastest first sector of anyone. So yeah. Stefan Sarazan, here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> On it. You saw the puff of smoke there, the, 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 the top hit the curve. He's going to be so determined to wow. get a result in this final race of the season. Yeah, he, he, he absolutely he wants a clear qualifying lap first. And yesterday was just terrible for him every lap. And then he got, uh, got learned some choice words, didn't we, in French? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. through. A lot of speed through there. Now, what's he done in the middle sector? Across the timing beam he comes and... It is, wait for it, a 31.5, so not superb, just a couple of tenths down. jean eric Verne's backing in the pits, but uh, Stefan Sarazan's the uh, man out there at the moment coming through the long left-hander at Rosary Gate. Might get caught up behind Salvador Duran. I don't think he'll quite catch him in time, though, before the end of the lap. He's just going to time this to perfection, isn't he? He's just going to catch the car in so, front. Is this going to be good enough for Stefan Sarazan to move to the top of the timing screens into the final corner? Throws it across the line, and it's second place 
Uh, closes the gap down to just a quarter of a second to Lucas Degrassi. But it's Degrassi. Back four. Back four. Box, box. That's them just uh, putting it back down to 150. It'll be a nice cool down lap and head in the pits. Oliver Turvey goes second quickest. A good lap Very from nice. him. Yep. Less than two tenths slower than Lucas Degrassi. Turvey has really impressed me this weekend. I know I probably keep going on about it a bit, but he's been proper good. Yeah, he has. He's done a great job. And um, you know, as well, we know he can drive an e-car quickly, but the Formula e-cars have got some definite intricacies to just drive in them. And then you've got to do the power management thing, which he, he really got a hold of pretty quickly yesterday. Yeah. Got a good teammate, obviously, in PK, but he, uh, yeah, he's, he's done a, a, a very, very good job so far. And um, if he's if he's auditioning for a, for a, a gig full time next year, <laughs> he's done himself no harm at all. A 123.690 was the fastest lap time we've seen so far. Uh, that was set by Loic Duval. Buemi did a 24.0, so Degrassi's 24.0 is in keeping with that. Here is Oliver Turvey. He's on another full power run, I think. Oh, no, he's just no, come off the he's... throttle yet, so he's uh, probably just finished his full power run and hasn't turned it down yet. He comes into the chicane, but... He'll get, uh, get in trouble for that. Yeah. They like you to turn it down and cool it down a little bit. Yeah. No, he is. He's still he's still showing 200 and still flashing up green. Yeah. Karun Chandok's on a... Uh, was on a lap there, I think. Yeah. So you can see the order there on the left-hand side at the moment. And uh, Nick Heidfeld here. Did you see how much... Next car is rolling over there. Looks like the rear bar might be disconnected than that one. It's really got a lot of roll in the rear. Up to turn eight. Chucks it in. And uh, Simone de Silvestro is back out on circuit and out doing a full 200 kilowatt lap by the looks of things as well. So we'll keep an eye out on her time. Or she might just be winding up to one. But this is uh, Nick Heidfeld bouncing over the chicane. And coming across the Middle sector timing line, is there going to be a much improvement for Heidfeld? 3.2 seconds down. Hasn't really been on it as much as his teammate this weekend, Nick Heidfeld. And no. Kind of went a bit missing in the race yesterday. I think this track suits Sarazan. It's got, he's got the, all that rallying experience. Yeah. And this is, <laughs> it's like Corsica, isn't it? Yeah, it is very much like a tarmac rally stage, isn't it? So uh, Heidfeld coming down. He's backed off now. Uh, Sylvester's done a 22-4 in sector one, which isn't bad. What's very good, though, is Oliver Turvey, 22-0 in Sector 1. So we could see Oliver Turvey jumping to the top of the times. Also keep an eye out on Sebastian Buemi, uh, because he's on a full power lap too. Here's Simone de Silvestro, 32-7 in the middle sector, which is uh, not too bad. Turvey's about to come through the middle sector as well. There's as, Simona uh, through 9 and 10 there. And she's actually quicker than Turvey in the middle sector, so Turvey's middle sector hasn't quite gone uh, according to plan. Here he is, coming through the long left-hander of 13, down into the final chicane on the circuit. Clouts the curbs and then heads out towards the final corner. You can see the back end desperate to get away. It's a great camera angle. It really shows the car yawing out. Here we go. What did he do? Turvey across the line, quickest, 23.909. Really good uh, first sector, middle and uh, okay, so final that's weren't as good. Okay, you just cool down, go back in. Simona lost four tenths through that last sector to the Turvey and half a second through the, the middle sector. So not, a, not a great lap there, bit of work to do still. Yep, there's Jerome D'Ambrosio in the Dragon team. We've got a few cars on the 200 kilowatt runs, Buemi Pique. and Piquet. Yep, so Duval, Buemi and Piquet. Here comes Buemi across the line, 23.642 for um, Sebastian Buemi, the quickest lap time we've seen so far this weekend. He jumps to the top of the times, but what's PK up to? He's I think the... he's just started, hasn't he? J'ai complètement bloqué la roue. La voiture, elle est bien, un peu plus tiki sur les freins, mais elle est bien. J'ai l'impression qu'elle est mieux parce qu'honnêtement, j'ai pas fait un beau tour. Mais il fallait que je prenne l'habitude. Je pouvais pas faire tout juste direct. Je bloquais les roues dans le. Ah, this is great on board with PK. Now let's see as he comes down to turn uh, nine and ten. He's three tenths oh. down in turn one, though, and he's going to get very busy coming into Whoa. the chicane. Maximum commitment there, very nice. But I think PK has already been blocked on this lap, so he's uh, lost a bit of time. He's eight tenths of a second down on Buemi already. Not a good middle sector either. Oh, really <laughs> runs those curbs. Plenty of curbs there, almost apex the wall. Through 13 into the final chicane on the course. 
front right lock up a little bit, but not too much drama. They're all nice. sliding there. There's a really big drop off on the exit of that chicane, and that's what gets the rears of the cars a little bit light. They run the power so oh, early. Oh, goodness too. me. Big <laughs> oversteer from PK. Across the line he comes and doesn't go particularly quickly up to sixth quickest, but that was good fun uh, for him. Fun Let's for us see. to watch. This is what happened to PK down at uh, turn eight. Oh, Silvostra gets out the way. And then ah, comes Simona. back in, yeah. Yeah, if there's one criticism, she, she does tend to do that a little bit in the, in situations like that. And she got out of the way of the one car. Yeah. Uh, she didn't really have much space, and there's the international sign of her driver right there. Uh, and then this was him coming into the final corner with a bit of oh back end step out. Well, he jumped the curb to the point the car came off the ground at the apex. OK. So, here's Karun Chanduk, uh, slowest of anyone so far, but not for much longer. He jumps up into eighth place. Uh, Stefan Sarazan across the line remains in fifth position. Fabio Lime is on a full power lap out there, as is the Silvestro. Lime has done a 22-3 in Sector 1. Uh, so has De Silvestro. So that's not bad from either of them, as Sebastian Buemi gets pushed back into the pit lane. Seven minutes and 40 seconds remaining. Uh, De Silvestro, Trulli and Lima are the drivers out there going full chat at the moment. Silvestro's first and uh, middle sectors aren't too bad, so she could improve from seventh position. Here she is now coming towards the final chicane. Piquet's there. <laughs> returning the favour. returning the favour, yeah. No, he didn't. Very nice. That was very good of him there, getting out of the way. So out then through towards the final corner comes De Silvestro. On the brakes for Chelsea Gate. And across the line. And it, uh, seventh position, an improvement, but no improvement in terms of actual okay, good job, places. Sir. Matt Four, Jeb will be coming up. He's two cars behind. He's going to be on a call lap. We'll try and warn you when he's coming up behind. Jeb's up. Okay, do we keep running now? Just the inexperience yeah, you can keep there. running in torque map four. Keep running in torque map four. You can run. Torque map four is uh, 150 kilowatts. Okay, so uh, PK's on another lap. Yeah, and so is uh, Jean Eric Verne. But Verne looked like he had quite a lot of traffic up in front of him. Not only the Silvestro, but mm -hmm. also a couple of other cars in the mix too. Here's Jano Trulli coming towards the final corner. PK's done a 22-1 in sector one, which is only a tenth or so down on the quickest time we've seen so far from Buemi. Jano truly jumps up to 11th place. Yellow flag out there, so someone may have had a misdemeanor. And it's Nelson Piquet facing the wrong way yeah. at turn eight. Look at the, the marks. He's obviously got on the power too hard there, and uh, and there's the result. What we've seen in, in turn 15, 16 in particular is see the track rubbering in. You actually, kind of unusual to see that. Oh, here we go. Lock the rears. Yeah. Switched around him. Look at Look maximum at lock, trying yeah. to keep it uh, keep it going there. Didn't hit anything. And then I guess with the with the uh, the weight in the rear of these cars, it it kind of pendulums them around. Here we go. Yeah, rears are locked. You, you can hear it chattering. Yeah, there's a lot of weight back there. Once yeah. it goes, Jack, there's only it's very difficult to catch. If you if you don't catch it in that first sort of five percent of your five degrees of your, you're 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 done. But as I was saying, 15, 16, tracks rubbering in. We don't normally see that with Formula E, but no, because this is the second day now after the race, we're seeing the track rubber in, and that will uh, definitely increase uh, the, the, the pace of the track. He's looking for reverse here. Yeah, that's PK. Can you help Signaling me? Signaling to the marshals, saying, can you turn me around, please? Yeah, oh, it's, a bit, it's a bit narrow up here. So that's up at uh, Sun Gate. Yeah, what's going on? Is he struggling to get... Does he just need a little movement to get uh, get into reverse? Push back around. It looks like they're going to give him a little three-point turn. So this is ruining uh, Nico Prost's lap. Uh, only Nico Prost is out there on the full 200. And now PK is going to get pushed back, and he's going to head out onto the circuit. So good work from the marshals. And PK is able to... Get going again, looks, waits for a space in the traffic, and off he goes. Loic Duval returns to the pits. Second quickest at the moment, uh, two tenths slower than Sebastian Buemi, so he didn't see that, but uh, he's gone very quick there. Loic Duval, Nico Prost has gone off at turn three. At Prince Albert. And he's going to try and reverse out of that one. Here's John Eric Verne then. 
And what's Verne looking like? Reasonable sector one, not a very good sector two. Is he on a full power lap? Yes, he is. No, he's not. No, he's not. It he's spiked on a little bit, didn't yeah. it? Uh, but I think he's on 150 at the moment. Oh, big lockup from Verne. Goodness me. That was all gone wrong. He did a good well to not stick that in the fence there. Yeah. So, uh, jean you can still see the smoke moving away from... Yeah, uh, copy that. We see that. Let's run to the flag. Go back to talk line, please. So now they're just going to... Can we not use the other car for 200 kilowatts? Here's Vern locking up again. Locked the, the right front first, unloaded side, and then uh, them both. So you can hear him on the radio saying, can't we use the other car for 200 kilowatts? He really wants to uh, get out there and and get in a qualifying sim, because at the moment he hasn't really done so. We didn't hear Roger's reply, Roger Griffith's reply, which probably, no. no. <laughs> He's only got three minutes to get in, do a pit stop, drive a car change, get back out, and mm, doubtful there's enough time. PK thinks he has a bit of a gearbox problem. He's coming back into the pit lane now. We've got Fabio Leimer and D'Ambrosio both on uh, 200 kilowatt qualifying simulations here. Yep, so we'll keep an eye out for them. Uh, here's John eric Verne, meanwhile, on a on a slow in-lap now. Oh, no, he's going to stay out to the flag, isn't he? A good first sector from Fabio Leimer and D'Ambrosio, in fact. Both of them have done pretty good sector ones. This is Leimer up towards the first of the lake chicanes. Look good through there. As he comes down now towards the uh, next goal, and uh, that's Sakon Yamamoto in the wall at turn three. And he's properly in the wall that time. At this point, Lemmer's thinking, I just don't And oh, the red did. flag's out. I was thinking, he's thinking, don't put the red out until I finish He's done that every time. Every time Fabio Lima's done yeah. a lap. So, Yamamoto. The crash at turn three. Sorry. The crash at turn three, sorry, he says. Let's see what happens here. It's too fast. He's just never going to make it, was he? <laughs> <laughs> So, red flags are out, and I think that'll effectively uh, bring an end to our session. Nico Prost, meanwhile, has uh, locked up and gone straight on here. Is that 11 and 12? Yep. So, this is, this is interesting, isn't it? It's kind of like, now they've kind of got used to the track, they're starting to push the track limits, more so than when it's a one-day format, where they take it all a bit easy. Let's see what happened to Prost here. Yeah, he just, you know, just thought about it, and then didn't want to do uh, what Senna did a bit earlier. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. You know, they're used to sort of driving at nine and a half tenths. They're just keeping it, there's such a tight schedule, keeping it within the, that comfort zone. And then today, they've got more and more used to the track. They've had the time to think about it overnight. The cars are getting a bit closer. They just look 10 tenths. <laughs> <laughs> He's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas, secret, secret. Lucas does not <laughs> like talking. <laughs> Reminds me of the Jackie Stewart film, uh, doing the shot in Monaco. And uh, uh, Franz Passever is talking to him, and uh, he sees the camera Jackie does, and he's, he's sort of putting his finger up to his lips, going, shh, no, no <laughs> secrets. Well, no secret what happened here. Sakon Yamamoto went into the wall. So uh, let's hear from Lucas Degrassi. Will he tell us any of his secrets this time around? He's down in the pits talking to Nicky Shields. So come on, Lucas Degrassi, can you give us a little bit of an inkling on what those secrets are all about? <laughs> I was just saying that don't film me while I'm talking about secrets. No, no, I was just commenting that people are really pushing today. You see a lot more accidents than yesterday. Uh, I didn't manage to get my second lap uh, done because uh, basically um, yellow flags, uh, people going off. But I think we have a good car. We improved the car from yesterday. Um, we are now in group four, so that helps a little bit also in qualifying. So I think everything is, uh, is under control at the moment. And is the track a lot cleaner than it was yesterday? Uh, the track is similar, but corner one, they did a fantastic job uh, resurfacing the inside, the bump, and now it's really fast. It's the fastest corner of the season, uh, over 120 miles an hour. So it's, uh, it's a pretty good challenge. Yeah. So some exciting racing ahead. Now, you mentioned, you know, you've made a few changes since yesterday. Are you going to change the car again before this afternoon or are you happy with the setup? Uh, we we fine-tuned the car in this session and now we leave it for qualifying. Thanks very much. Good luck. Good to hear from Lucas Degrassi. Not quite the uh, secrets we wanted to hear, but uh, nevertheless, there's Nelson Piquet. 
and uh, Oliver Turvey as well. Turvey saying he outbreaked himself at one of the chicanes. Turvey's been a great addition to that team because he's really he's gone out there, he's been straight on the same pace as Nelson, and he's able to contribute to the to the setup of the car. Look at Nelson's actually looking as he's talking to him. He's, he's listening to what he's saying as opposed to yeah, 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 whatever. It, <laughs> you must, know, be, it must be so good to have two teammates working together. It is if you can get it, and you can see some of the guys up and down the pit lane, the ones that are actually doing it. And you know, I don't, don't think anybody's done it better than, than the Edams guys this year. Yeah. Hence the fact they won the team, champ team championship. Yes, they wrapped up the team's championship yesterday, so we've just got the drivers' title left to sort out today. Wemi is going to end this session quickest. A one minute twenty-three point six four two, two and a half tenths clear of uh, Lo Duval, but. No one really, well not no one, but not many people got a clear run. Here's a look at the results of free practice two. Sebastian Buemi, quickest man of all. 0.263 quicker than Loic Duval, who's looking very quick. Oliver Turvey, third quickest. Fantastic for him in the next TV by Team China racing squad. Lucas Degrassi, fourth. Sarazan, fifth. PK Championship leader down in sixth position. Jerome D'Ambrosio, second yesterday. Only 13th today after.